What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my player career mode. This is episode number 33 and uh, we start today's episode off with a game against West Ham here at Craven Cottage. Back in the league of course after that disappointing 3-2 uh, defeat to Manchester City at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final. So back to league matters now but despite that there is some positive news to take out of this and that is that Kasami is back in the starting 11. Yes, finally Kasami is back and as you can see by league table we're currently sitting 8 points clear of Arsenal who are in fifth we're in third and we've also got a game in hand so a fantastic chance for us to really extend the uh, the gap between us and Arsenal as opposed to who's going to finish in the top four and as we take on West Ham here the first chance would fall in the 19th minute as uh, Bissoufa gets on the ball down the right hand side plays it forward and well it's just the worst start possible for us unfortunately Andy Carroll opens the score in here the former Newcastle and Liverpool man puts it past the goalkeeper and makes it 1-0 so not a good start for us unfortunately uh, in a game where Kasami returns and he's thinking, oh, Jesus, I should have stayed in the treatment room. But, uh, yeah, still Fulham nil, West Ham 1. And in the 30th minute here, I get played forward here. Uh, Reed can't catch up. A great chance here. I take it a bit too far, so I drag it back, play it inside, and Kasami, well, maybe he's going to be a little bit rusty because he should have scored that, let's be honest, but instead he put it wide. So still 1-0 to the away side. But uh, just before halftime, uh, Scott Parker gets on the ball and finds Brian Ruiz. Ruiz collects the ball, and I'm asking for the ball here, and I'll take the ball around Noble. Go down the right-hand side here, offload it back towards the run of uh, Brian Ruiz. Reese, Reese plays it back to me. He wants me to put it across, uh, put it across. So I do so. Uh, the second attempt, the first one is blocked, but the second attempt, so I get past Noble Hill, a double or quadruple or five step overs, if you will. I cross the ball in, and the goalkeeper gets caught in no man's land, and it's turned in by guess who? It's Kasami. 45 minutes into his return, and finally Kasami uh, marks his return with a goal. I say finally because he should have scored one early, but still Fulham one, West Ham one. Of course, it's Kasami who gets the goal. We just play so much better with him back in the team, and I play so much better, obviously. So, one apiece here, and in the 61st minute, uh, 63rd minute, Matt Jarvis gets on the board and finds Basufa, causing us all sorts of problems. He links up with Andy Carroll again, and Carroll offloads it towards Stuart Downing, who shoots and finds the back of the net. So, two former Liverpool players scoring here, Downing and Carroll, and it is Fulham 1, West Ham 2. So... Unfortunately for us, we are behind for the second time in this game. And directly from kickoff, we tried to respond here as uh, myself and Kasami link up. And as he strikes it from range, unfortunately, the Spanish goalkeeper Adrian tips it wide for a corner. So almost an instant reply there. But in the 71st minute here, Kieran Richardson gets on the ball. Uh, he keeps hold of it and gives it in field towards Kasami. Richardson uh, jumps over the ball, sorry, and eventually the ball gets played forward to me, uh, to me down left hand side. I take on Jordan Spence. Nice couple of step overs here. Swinging across. Kasami wins the header. But unfortunately, this time, Adrian isn't beaten and he tips it over the bar, so still 2-1, but from the corner, it's crossed in eventually by uh, the Costa Rican, Brian Ruiz, into the centre, uh, towards the far post, it's cleared away by O'Brien, but not far enough, Richardson gets on the ball, offloads to Kasami, he shoots, it falls to me, I strike it, Adrian spills it, can I get to the rebound first? Yes, I can, I put it into the empty net, and it is Fulham 2, West Ham 2, so myself and Kasami back on the score sheet together again, and that was a really fortunate goal, there was so much luck in that goal, the rebound fell straight to me, the shot was but again, the rebound fell straight to me. So Fulham 2, West Ham 2, and deservedly we were back on level terms. And directly from kickoff, West Ham tried to respond as Andy Carroll finds Noble here. His ball is eventually cut out, and uh, as our centre back gives the ball towards Kasami, he finds me. And it's a great chance on the break, but I got no one with me. So as I go down the left hand side here, I take the ball past Tompkins, but there's only Kasami in this, uh, the second half of the pitch with me. But I keep holding the ball, I keep hold of it, roll it through towards the runner Sidwell. It's played backwards towards Adrian, but I just don't know what to say about this. The goalkeeper gets caught in no man's land the ball falls to me and it is just the simplest finish ever Fulham 3 West Ham 2 and I just have no idea what Adrian was doing there you see that sometimes the AI goalkeepers they'll take like two or three touches instead of just whacking the ball upfield and I don't really know why that is but as you can see here he takes a couple of touches and he doesn't clear it on time eventually Sidwell makes the challenge it falls to me all I've got to do is keep a cool head slot it into the open net with my weaker left foot and that's exactly what I did so Fulham 3 West Ham 2 two goals in quick uh, concession for me. Uh, Kasami got a goal as well and thankfully that was how the game would finish. So back to winning ways with a 3-2 victory here. We beat West Ham on the opening game of the season but this one was a lot more difficult. We beat them here at Craven Cottage by three goals to two. I was very pleased to get two. Kasami back in the team gets one as well and um, yeah I definitely have to say now touch wood we should really qualify for the top four because you know qualify for the Champions League via finishing in the top four because 
as you see me get a 9.6 rate in there. You know, in the past couple of months when kasami has been injured, we've been absolutely shambolic. There's no two ways about that. But now he's back in the side. You can just tell the team plays so much better. I get so much more service. I feel like I'm, uh, I've am i got someone to link up with a lot better. I feel just much, much better. So I really do feel now that we should be able to score a lot more goals and we should be able to finish in the top four. So yeah, like don't get me wrong, these past few uh, weeks and these past few episodes have been really difficult for me, but I'm really confident that now we're going to turn on the style but still uh, as you can see here there was a look at our stats and accomplishments uh, sorry attributes here's a look at our accomplishments 63 percent complete and also a look at the league table six games to go and we are currently 11 points clear of uh, arsenal who are actually in sixth place and uh, also eight points clear of newcastle in fifth so i don't know why i said arsenal in the last game it's actually newcastle who are in fifth and uh, we're eight points clear of them with six games to go so yeah we, we should be okay we're in third place as well with three points clear of city and fourth so if anyone's going to get caught up you'd imagine it'll be city so so, yeah, you know, we're doing quite well. And, of course, eight points clear of Newcastle in fifth is a great margin with just six games to go. But as we take on Newcastle here away at St. James's Park, this is a really important game. Because if Newcastle win this, they cut the gap to just five points with five games to go. And you just never know, do you? You've seen some teams do it, come back from a, a big points gap to go ahead and claim, uh, claim a top four play. So it could happen again here. And if you take on Newcastle, like I said, there's eight points uh, the gap at the moment. And they've got a very good side, of course, some very decent players in there. And obviously a, a, a very decent defence as well. Tim Krul is a goalkeeper I really do rate. And obviously Debussy is a right back I like as well. And Ben Arthur in the team. Everyone likes a bit of Ben Arthur. So a very good side Newcastle have. No real surprise. They're uh, challenging for the top four. But the first chance would fall directly from kickoff. As uh, eventually I pass the ball to Kasami after about 20 minutes of just standing there. I give the ball to Kasami. He finds Brian Rees. And I thought I'd just run forward. Ask for a free ball and see what happens. And it does come to me. But unfortunately I press circle way too quickly. I wanted to chest it and then half volley. But I press circle way too quickly and it went straight into the gloves of Tim Krul so that's a real shame, it could have been a fantastic start but unfortunately still scored as however in the 5th minute here we pass the ball around and as our German right back finds Scott Parker he gives it to Boatang, back to Parker and you just see the simple passes from Fulham no need to concede early possession just pass the ball around, make sure you get a good feel for the ball, sort of frustrate Newcastle a little bit, and as I get played the ball here down the right hand side I offload it towards the run of our German right back, he plays it back to me I get on the right hand side, a really good chance here cut onto my left foot, I strike it, it's safe by Tim Krul, but who follows in? It's Kasami. It's my 40 assist as well. Kasami gets the goal. And it is just typical. I'm not really sure I can claim much of an assist for that. I didn't mean it to be an assist, but it still counts. And uh, yeah, Kasami gets the goal, follows up my rebounded shot and makes it Newcastle nil, Fulham 1. So glad to be in front in this game early on. And in a big game, I was so pleased to be leading. But uh, in the 18th minute here, they had a good chance, Newcastle, but Moyer had a simple save. And in the eight, uh, 27th minute here, uh, Boatang gives me the ball uh, through the centre. I get past my man here, offload it towards the run of Kasami. Kasami finds Boatang. I didn't think he'd have enough pace to carry on, so I asked for the free ball. He finds me eventually after I rob Steven Taylor, go through one-on-one, -on -one, play for the penalty. Tim Krul, the Dutch keeper, brings me down. And there is, well, there's complaints by Tim Krul, but I'm not really sure why, because he definitely brought me down. I got completely clattered into by the goalkeeper and you have to say that's a, that's a definite penalty in my opinion even though I was probably playing for it it's still a penalty so Newcastle nil, Fulham won a penalty for us and I'm going to take it I've scored four out of four penalties so far in my career so can I make it five out of five in front of the Newcastle crowd yes I can Tim Krul dives the right way but it's now my fifth out of fifth penalty scored does that make sense? My fifth penalty scored out of five attempts. That's all you need to know. So very pleased with that penalty. And um, yeah, so far a perfect record from the spot. So at least Fulham know if they ever win a penalty, they can rely on me to smash it into the back of the net. So it's a decent penalty as well. There's no ch well, there is chance with Tim Krul, but there was so much power on it. He couldn't get there on time despite diving the right way. So Newcastle nil, Fulham two, and two goals up in the first half, playing really, really well. Exactly what we needed. And in the 39th minute here, you see Scott Parker get on the ball. He offloads it to Boatang. Boatang collects it then back to Parker. Parker. Parker then offloads it towards our German right back who strikes it but unfortunately Cruel makes the save and keeps it at 2-0 but to be honest in the first half other than the one half chance Newcastle had there was no real pressure from the home side it was all us really and uh, from the corner the header is well saved by Cruel but he was the busiest of two goalkeepers obviously in the second half was that going to change well it didn't really look like it and in the 54th minute it's Boateng plays that wide towards Brian Ruiz he finds me I take on Yanga and Biwa beat him here with a simple turn go down the right hand side 
a uh, offload the ball towards the right, uh, left hand side. Kakaniklic strikes on the half volley, but it goes harmlessly wide of the post. But Newcastle, this is a game they needed to win. They couldn't just draw, they needed to win if they wanted to challenge for a top four place, and they just did not turn up. And the 69th minute here, I get past a couple of defenders, roll it through towards Kasami. Great chance for 3 0. The uh, first uh, shot is tackled, and uh, the ball falls to me. I strike it from just outside the area, but it goes over the bar. But the game does finish Newcastle 0, Fulham 2. So another three points, and that opens up a nine point gap. Is it a nine point gap or an eight point gap? I can't remember now. But uh, a lot of points anyway between us and fifth place. And you have to say now, with just five games to go, we really should be qualifying for the top four. I think it's going to be a real valiant effort. It'll probably be even more difficult for us not to qualify for the top four now, because of course the other teams will have to rely on a lot of slip ups and win pretty much every game. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of my player career mode series, please, uh, please leave a like, because it's much appreciated. And it really does help my channel out and I'll see you for the next episode of my player career mode very soon